the world's most mysterious continent. What are the major powers hiding from us? What comes first to your mind when people ask the most mysterious continent in the world? The answer may surprise you. Many thought that Antarctica is simply a cold continent, but is that really all? Nowadays, many people assume that under the thick ice of Antarctica, there might be a world to discover. Antarctica is Earth's southmost continent, covering an area of more than 14 million square kilometers. 98% of the land is covered by ice. Mountain peaks or slopes are rare to be found. The average thickness of the entire Antarctic ice sheet is 1.9 kilometers, and the thickest is 4.8 kilometers. That's close to 16,000 feet. To put that into perspective, the Burj Khalifa in Dubai is 2,722 feet. The average temperature in the coastal areas is minus 18 degrees Celsius, which is considered fairly warm in Antarctica. In the center of Antarctica, the average temperature could be minus 62 degrees Celsius, and wind speeds could be 320 kilometers an hour. If people lived here, they would freeze within five minutes, and their hearts would stop beating in less than 10 minutes. It's true to say that the center of Antarctica is a dead land. No creature can survive, even penguins. The mainstream geologists believe that living organisms couldn't survive in Antarctica since more than 12 million years ago, and nobody has set foot here. But there is evidence that Antarctica is not as desolate as we thought. Strange Phenomenon of Magnetic Poles and Ice in 2015, the U.S. National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA, claimed that the volume of ice covering the east of Antarctica increased by 82 billion tons per year from 2003 to 2008. The main cause was snowfall. Peculiarly, however, the ice in the west was melting rapidly. Even though it has the same amount of snowfall as the east, since 2009, every year, about 60 cubic kilometers of glaciers in the west have melted, 70,000 times higher than the volume of the famous U.S. Empire State Building. So, is there any underground energy in West Antarctica that melts the ice? What more? The activities of the Antarctica electromagnetic fields are rather abnormal. How does the Earth's magnetic field work? It is formed by the motions of liquid iron in Earth's core. The materials include melted steel and nickel under high pressure inside the Earth. Their motion is fueled by the Earth's rotation, thus generating a magnetic field. Mountains, mines, trains, cars, and high-frequency radars can all create areas of abnormal magnetic fields. However, the phenomenon of unusual magnetic fields in Antarctica was too common. Is there any energetic activity under the thick ice that hasn't been detected yet? Currently, scientists have discovered about 400 lakes under the thick ice layer in Antarctica, the largest lake of which is Vostok, located in the southeast of Antarctica, covering about 15,000 square kilometers. The unusual magnetic phenomenon in Vostok confused scientists as it changed too frequently. The magnetic field runs all the time to any possible direction. It was almost impossible to exactly measure the lake's size as well as its location. Was it the magnetic field that distorted our measurement? Or did the lake actually move due to some undiscovered energy? Pilot data collected at the lake in 2001 shows that the lake's magnetic field was very similar to that of a large city like New York's Manhattan Island. So was there really a city under the ice? And that's not even the most astonishing thing about Antarctica. Recently, scientists have released some even much more jaw-dropping findings. The Mysterious Pyramids In 2016, a group of American and European scientists announced the discovery of three ancient pyramids in Antarctica, two on the shore and one near the coast. This was totally news to the world. People approached the discovery with all sorts of reactions. They doubted, ridiculed, and also supported. In 2013, satellite imagery analyst Joseph White discovered a very bizarre terrain on a mountainside in Antarctica. It was a very large square structure, about two kilometers long, and had the shape of a pyramid. At first, Mr. White was quite doubtful about his own finding. 
he couldn't believe that it was a pyramid. However, this structure was very similar to man-made buildings. Four sides were arranged perfectly to target east, west, south, and north. White had extensive experience in topographic mapping, and he assumed that the so-called pyramid couldn't be naturally formed, given its perfectly symmetrical shape. When he learned about the discovery of the pyramids in Antarctica, White immediately thought of his assumption. If the structure is proved to be a man-made pyramid, this will certainly be the oldest and largest pyramid on Earth. In addition to the pyramid in Antarctica, geologists have found such mysterious pyramidal structures in other parts of the world, the northern plains of Peru, such as Indonesia, and even Los Angeles. These pyramid-shaped landforms were all buried in soil or bricks, making them look much more naturally formed. Some even assumed that these giant pyramids may be part of a network structure. Each pyramid is a power generator, linked to a network of energy transmission, or an air navigation system used in interplanetary traveling. After all, what are the pyramids for? Is it a power station or an interstellar network system? It's hard to answer. The discovery of a pyramid-like terrain in Antarctica has raised the question whether there was a prehistoric or an extraterrestrial civilization on this continent before. The Nazis' Legacy In December 1938, a German cargo ship named Schwabenland visited Antarctica with 33 crew members on board. Among them were scientists, soldiers, even construction workers, and members of the old Thule Society. The Thule Society was founded in 1918 after World War I in Munich. This is an enigmatic group supporting the Nazi party since its early days. Before Hitler came to power, the Thule Society had disbanded, but its core members joined Nazi and got high-ranking positions. These people promoted mysticism in Nazi. Rudolf Hess, Hitler's deputy head of state, was an active member on this secret society. It specialized in searching for mystical forces around the world. In 1938 and 1943, the Nazis conducted expeditions to Tibet to search for the underground world of Shambhala. Tool Society members were active participants, and during the Nazi expedition in Antarctica, members of the Tool Society were also present. The purpose of their excursion to Antarctica was still unknown, but the rumor has it is that the Nazis found some advanced technology in the underground Antarctica, then built a base there, including the underground headquarters, submarines, and underwater caves. After that, they even dispatched a small community to reside there. Before the end of World War II, most of the Nazi secret files had been destroyed, so their information can only stay legends. But after World War II ended, the U.S. immediately sent scientists to Antarctica for large-scale research. In 1946, the U.S. maneuvered 4,700 troops, 13 ships and submarines, and planes to Antarctica. In 1956, they built a research station named McMurdo on the Antarctic island of Rhode. Did the U.S. retrieve some of the Nazi files that had not yet been destroyed? Very likely indeed, because following the Germans' defeat in the World War, the U.S. Strategic Intelligence Agency conducted a special operation, Operation Paperclip, which recruited 1,600 former Nazi scientists, engineers, and technicians. Antarctica is currently taken over by seven countries, establishing 68 international bases and accommodating 5,000 permanent residents, including science and technology staff and military personnel. Antarctica is the most confusing place in the world. The coldest continent on Earth appeals to no creature at all. Even a bird would try to avoid flying through it, but it's strictly banned by governments. In Antarctica mainland, there are many places that require special permits to enter. Why is that? Secrets Under the Ice UFO expert Linda Moulton Howe of the History Channel recounted that she came into contact with a naval flight engineer who had worked for more than 10 years in Antarctica named Brian. Brian told her his unbelievable experience in Antarctica. He worked in Antarctica from 1983 to 1997. His primary mission was searching and rescuing. His best memory was of a strange encounter when he first arrived in Antarctica. That day, 
he was on a mission with his colleagues. When flying over the mountain, they saw a series of circular flying objects moving rapidly from slopes to slopes, as if they were collecting or surveying something. Brian was sweating profusely, trying not to disturb the unidentified flying objects. Fortunately, after a while, the strange flying saucers disappeared. Those few minutes were short, but felt like an eternity to Brian. Meanwhile, his colleague remained calm as if nothing happened. Brian did see such flying objects sometimes after that, but he got used to them and no longer felt bizarre. Another time, Brian was engaging in an emergency rescue mission. The usual route would take too much time and put the patient's life in danger, so Brian's team decided to take a shortcut over the restricted area. When flying over the forbidden area, they saw a cave entrance on the endless ice. This cave had a cone shape and a huge heat source that could melt several kilometers long of ice. According to what Brian saw, the diameter of the cone bottom could be up to 300 kilometers. Strangely, when flying over the cave, the needle on the plane's control panel spinned out of control. Moreover, the electronic devices they were carrying also malfunctioned. Fortunately, the pilots quickly turned back and got out of there safe and sound. The members of the crew all felt like there was something underneath the cave that the authorities tried to cover up. After the incident, Brian's group received a strict warning from Washington, prohibiting them to fly over the restricted area and requiring them to keep this incident confidential. But Brian was not the only one experiencing that. Major General Byrd of the United States had a similar experience. Mr. Richard Evelyn Byrd was born on October 25, 1888, into a prestigious family in Virginia, USA. Both his father and brother were U.S. federal or state senators. Byrd was a popular hero in the United States in the 20th century. He was appointed Major General of the United States Navy for successfully flying across the Atlantic Ocean in 1919 and the North Pole in 1926. In 1947, he made the fourth expedition to Antarctica, passing through a mysterious underground world. When he got close to the area, like Brian's experience, all the equipment of the plane stopped working. Washington later warned Major General Byrd not to talk about this incident. The story of Major Byrd exploring the underground world was cited in The Hollow Earth, published in 1964. The book claims that this story was sourced from his diary. It is safe to say that Antarctica is the most mysterious continent in the world, being covered with kilometer-thick ice. The region is extremely unfriendly to any sort of living creatures. Even baby penguins cannot survive in the center of the continent. They could only live in the coastal areas. Antarctica's extremely thick ice must be hiding even more shocking secrets. This continent now is considered much more mysterious than America's Area 51, Despite 70 years of exploration, what did governments end up discovering that they didn't want the public to find out? Thank you for watching. Goodbye, and we'll see you next time.